What's up, Soul Nation? Ginger Prime here. Today, with my friend Nick, we just sat down and watched the entire uh, reveal gameplay stream for Outriders. In fact, we've got some gameplay footage rocking and rolling for you right now. You can find the full footage of what we're seeing here over at PlayStation Universe. I'll include a link in the description if you guys want to go check the footage out, get the audio, really see more of the three classes and what we got revealed with a secret fourth class and more. Nick, welcome to the uh, welcome to the channel, welcome to the program here. Why don't you Thank introduce you. yourself and uh, and tell people what you thought about this game? And we've got uh, all kinds of details also from a Game Informer article that you have access to. So there's a story, there's gameplay. Uh, we've got it all. Going to give you guys our impressions. And uh, so take it over. Take uh, take it away, Nick. Uh, so I'm Nick, and I play games. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hi, Nick. And I, I, I thought it looked really interesting from the gameplay I saw um, and from what I've read and everything they talked about. It's definitely ticking a lot of the boxes I was uh, looking for in this sort of game. Uh, so I, I'm really happy with all of that. So really excited for it. So uh, they, we, we know of the three classes and we kind of talked about this while we were live streaming and doing the pre-show. But you have the Devastator, the Trickster the pyromancer there is a deep rich store this is a competitive or not not competitive a cooperative uh rpg game and so it's got the kind of that third person uh action shooter style game but it's not a, let's go ahead and tell people what this is not it's not an mmo it's not i didn't get the um i didn't get the destiny vibe uh you know from that kind of shared world uh, it's not open world at all right it's very hub based you have your, uh, you have, they have this vehicle that you can, you know, customize with your trophies and more. But, like, go, break down some of the classes. Let's go ahead and talk about the trickster first, uh, with the skills that they have in the article. What, what somebody might be interested in playing the trickster. Why don't you uh, share what you got? Okay, so uh, the the trickster is really about getting in close uh, with the enemies and sort of like uh, controlling them, I guess. So you can teleport either behind them or away from them. Uh, depending on the skills you can even freeze them entirely and sort of just unleash damage or your allies your teammates can just unleash damage on them uh, so it, it's really good for co-op and solo uh, play it looks like and yeah it's just like I, I can imagine playing that class would be really fun with just a shotgun getting in there and just destroying enemies absolutely uh, and you said like freeze so there's obviously magic that they're going to have access to uh, you know and uh, what kind of abilities can, besides the uh, the teleportation, are there any other abilities that somebody who might, you know, what, what a trickster can pick up? Uh, so from the list here, I've got, uh, like, there's way more than this, but, like, you can actually uh, just spin around, like, sort of like Crash Bandicoot style with knives out and just slash enemies apart. Uh, so that looks fun. <laughs> and <laughs> there's actually a really fun one uh, here, and this is for the people who don't really want to use skills. You can actually just apply a, uh, a damage buff to your weapon. So all your uh, bullets in your current magazine will just do extra damage until you reload. So right now on the screen, the gameplay that I have going on, uh, it's got obviously uh, the UI, but as a part of those skills, you have a skill for your left bumper, a skill for your right bumper or L1 and R1. And you have a kind of probably a bigger skill that's left bumper and right bumper together. So it looks like you can take three skills and overall, like, you know, this is, there's a lot that we don't know yet, but it looks like each skill probably has about a 10, 15 second cooldown. So you're going to be using these skills really frequently as opposed to a game like Destiny, where it was like, I guess, more strategic and when you would use your ability uh, with your like gun, gr uh, grenade or melee. Is that, do you get that same vibe? Uh, definitely. Yeah. Like, so if you wanted to just, you know, hammer out skill after skill, you could do that. All three of them, you could probably, yeah, just rotate them, I guess. So, uh, break down, uh, let's go into the Devastator, because the, when they describe the Devastator as somebody who likes to rush in, has a little bit maybe more tankiness to them, uh, that sounded kind of more up my alley, especially with how this game looks and, and plays. It has that Gears of War vibe, but, um, you know, there's just way more I could talk about that. But talk to me about what kind of skills that they have listed for the Devastator. Uh, so first off, and this is probably the one I, I imagine most people using, would be uh, you can sort of just like form rocks around yourself and that will like uh, sort of like lower the amount of damage that comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, another one is you can just like all the bullets that are 
would hit you are sort of just like collected and then you just shoot them out in one collective burst um and then oh this is probably my, fa my favorite one is impale which just shoots out st uh spikes mm -hmm. and then if you kill an enemy with a spike it actually shoots out a spike from the ground and that will heal nearby allies oh that's so pretty can, cool yeah you can just collect near that spike and just get healed for a little while would you say the devastator is the healer like if you're going to go off of maybe like a holy trinity or is there another way that they showed us how to heal in game um so for teammates that's the only one i saw that could heal teammates really so maybe but again this is just a small amount of the skills that are available okay and for those who don't know as a part of just like self-healing it seems to be tied in with damage i kind of called it everybody's a blood healer so by putting out damage you're going to be healing yourself obviously this is that rpg when you look at the ui there's a couple things that we had questions about and then i want to talk about the the pyromancer but we have like uh, you can see level six it's got xp that's being filled in and then they have this world tier uh level that we not quite sure yet what that is um, and so that just is really quite fascinating to me uh, overall. But the uh, the UI is quite impressive. The visuals are quite impressive. So now I'm going to let you take over a little bit. Uh, talk to me about the Pyromancer. Okay, so the Pyromancer is probably uh, the most fun if you're playing with teammates because it just allows you to sort of do uh, area of effect damage, uh, do damage to a lot of targets at the same time, but mm -hmm. not necessarily kill them. So, you know, sort of like lower them. Uh, so you got thermal bomb, which allows you to throw it out, throw out a grenade type thing, uh, which sets enemies on fire. Um, but if an enemy dies to uh, to that grenade bomb, uh, you actually they actually just create another explosion. Um, <laughs> I'm watching so, I'm watching a pyromancer right now, and it's just gorgeous. And then that teamed up with the trickster who slows everybody down. So from a competitive perspective, these classes are complementing each other very well uh what other oh, things does the pyromancer have anything else listed that they can do uh so the pyromancer is actually the one we know the least amount at least based on the game and from our article but you have uh overheat which just sort of knocks back enemies as well as just unleash a uh wave of fire mm -hmm. um and then heat wave which oh sorry heat wave is the one with the wave of fire and uh overheats the one that just pushes back but also has an area of effect burning sort of thing yeah nice dot they got a lot of uh, damage over time abilities so there yeah. are some like kind of what i would define as an mmo element but this is definitely not an mmo it also does not have pvp for those worried this is going to be kind of that power fantasy and they described obviously you're going after uh, a lot of loot and if the game isn't nice to you and you don't get the drops that you're looking for you can break down that loot you can turn it into scraps and then apparently you can go shopping for the pieces of gear that you do want now, you showed me and uh, shared some screenshots with me earlier talking about the different types of weapons that you can get. W did anything um, like excite you about how they're handling kind of weapons and gear in this game? Uh, so the mod system looks really fun. So it's sort of like you can apply skills to weapons. Uh, so there was one weapon I saw in the gameplay where you can just sort of like... It, the mod I saw was um, it sort of like shoots down electricity when you shoot. Uh, so that looked really fun. Um, but yeah, no, I just love the mod system because it's allowed you to sort of like take your weapons that little bit further and just do some extra carnage. Mm -hmm. So after the gameplay reveal and with the gameplay that we're seeing, uh, you know, today, what questions do you still have about this game? This is coming out holiday 2020. We know it's coming to next gen. And it's supposed to look even better on next gen. It's coming to PC. It's also coming to current gen. It's made by People May Fly and uh, published by uh, Square Enix. And this, I don't know if this is necessarily, uh, you know, <laughs> it's like, it's not necessarily like this on, like always online game that I, that I can tell so far. So there's still plenty of questions that I have when it comes down to, you know, the end game, um, you know, kind of that cycle, you like what kind of monetization systems are going to be in place. Do you have any like of those questions or do you have any of those answers? Uh, so, no, I don't have any answers to that. Uh, the one I want to know a lot is, uh, and I think this is a popular question, is crossplay. Oh, Will yeah. Will there be crossplay or cross save at the very least? At, at the minimum, because from a, a character building game, like, hey, I want to 
level up and if you're playing on one platform and I can come play with you and continue my progression, uh, that's going to be really important. They mentioned in the stream, and I don't know if you caught this, but it's, it's, it's subtle, but it's interesting. As a part of like us playing the game together, I'm always going to be the star of what I see and I'm going to be in the background of what you see. So you're going to, but you'll be the star of what you see. So we're going to be interacting with the cutscenes and the game itself, but we're also going to be together. It's not going to be, the story isn't going to be like this isolating experience that we have. And then all of a sudden we have our two buddies with us, you know, randomly. We also don't know if there's like matchmaking or if the game's going to find friends to play with. <laughs> I have, I, I think this gave me more questions than, uh, you know, but, which is great because it answered so many that I'm like, well, like you said, with Crossplay, what, what are the questions do you have right now um, that you can think of? Uh, well, I want to know what the fourth class is. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but I, I, yeah, like you mentioned earlier, uh, monetization. Like, uh, so w what are their plans to monetize this? Like, are there actually going to be any microtransactions or is it just going to be like, you buy it and it's done? Right, I mean, and what, then they, the and if it's then? yeah, well, and then if it's successful, that they release like content drops. I'm I'm sure that that's all going to be somewhat like, as they have like almost a year before this game actually comes out, that they're going to have plenty of time to, to release more information for us. Like, and by the way, here's this, the um, um so, go ahead. So I don't know if you caught this, but they actually mentioned that they uh do have plans for future games in this series. Oh, uh, so they they definitely do have uh like they are looking forward to a future so hopefully they get to do that yeah like personally if i was going to have a wish list of items i'd love to know more about the end game i'd love there to be some kind of like raids uh some you know more aspirational content things that when you get the gear that you get you have a yeah that can that gives you the ability to ki kill bigger and uh, take on harder challenges because obviously the, that's kind of the, the loop of the rpg itself do you find it any bit strange that, that we're gonna have four classes and there's it's kind of a, a one to three player experience not really because uh I, I, like because you could have two of the same class so like that's true so it, it doesn't like in a lot of games you have three classes three players but in this you can sort of like you know you're not missing out it doesn't feel like you're missing out if you have like two pyromaniacs because the pyromaniacs will be very different depending on your build yeah absolutely so like even yeah I, I don't feel like you'd be missing out on any power if you didn't have well because you don't have that fourth player okay nick um if there's uh, anything else that uh, we need to cover like is there any other details that we need to let people know about this game i think we covered the, the like pretty much everything i just at least off the top of my head that's what i remember <laughs> um so i think the only thing we didn't talk about are side quests okay so they mentioned there's two hours of side quest i think Two hours two worth hours. of cutscenes that are tied to side quest, and almost. Oh, two is that hours. what they said? Yeah, and almost two hours worth of cutscenes for the main story. Like they said, the main story is like an hour and forty minutes of cutscenes, or ninety minutes of cutscenes, just in the cutscenes, and then o over two hours of cutscenes for side quests. So this is a yeah. very narratively driven story, and uh, and like we didn't really kind of dive into that. And so if you're worried about story uh, spoilers, this is you know going isn't going to spoil the story. But if you want to kind of you know, say, hey, I'm sold, I'm in for the gameplay, I don't want to know anything else about the world, you know, thanks for watching the video, come back later, and Nick, tell them where they can find you, and then let's talk story. Uh, so, I am available on Twitter at just Yukumio, actually, I'm everywhere with just Yukumio. Just Yukumio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll include a link to, to your yeah. <laughs> your page as well, so they can find you easily, but yeah, so uh, you're on Twitter, Do you, uh, you, you're about to start your streaming process again, is that right? Uh, yeah, so I'm going to jump into streaming in the next month or so. I'm everywhere on Facebook, Twitch, Mixer, YouTube, even Twitter sometimes. Nice. So, <laughs> so guys, go check out Nick. Uh, give him a follow. Yukumio uh, is his name, and his link is in the description. So now let's go ahead and talk about some stories. So if you do, if you don't want to have this ruined for you, um, you know, thank you. Come on. <laughs> we'll see you in another video. So we're on this planet, Enoch. Uh, we've come here, and it's actually 30 years have passed um, since we first landed uh, so, and uh, run into the anomaly. Go ahead, jump in. Uh, actually, it, the game starts way before then. So um, so what happens is uh, you, you've traveled from Earth. Earth sort of got, like, really screwed up. I, I don't go into detail how. But you go into a, sort of like a colony ship, generation ship. Okay. Um, and you're just flying off to this uh, Goldilocks planet, if you know what that is. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. like a 
it's a it's another planet that could sustain life <laughs> yeah um and so yeah you go on that and then at some point during your journey 15 years ago you lost contact with earth oh wow uh so you're, you're completely cut off um when you wake up there's no earth there's nothing there is a second ship um but that gets blown up so that's just gone uh some survivors do come to your ship but not many uh and then you go land down in some drop ships uh you walk around this hub area and sort of get introduced to the world and you find out there's this uh signal and you need to go find out what the hell's going on with the signal that's popping up where's it coming from what's it mean that sort of thing mm -hmm. uh so you go off and do that and then all of a sudden uh it starts raining but it's not normal rain. It's like uh, filled with oily black stuff. Ooh, gross. <laughs> and uh, then the wildlife just starts attacking you and, uh, you know, stuff just kicks off. Uh, and then you sort of get like, you, you retreat, you go into hibernation or cry asleep or whatever it's called for 30 years. And then you wake up, but you're not human anymore. You're changed. You have powers. And uh, that's when you'd pick your class, I believe. But yeah, and that's where the game sort of kicks off for real. So the world has just obviously like gone to hell, like this new world as well. And everything, not just we have changed, but the planet has changed. The, you know, the creatures have changed. The people who survived and didn't get back, put back into cryo sleep for 30 years they're holding on to some form of survival, you know, so you're fighting monsters, you're fighting other like altered, you know, beings that maybe have gotten so like corrupted. The tagline for the game is leave humanity behind. And so they're saying that as you level and as you play, it's like you're becoming the, this God, this all powerful, all destructive force. And so you kind of see that within the enemies of the game. You kind of see that within the setting and the gameplay as well as the world being so destroyed. But they did mention one thing that I thought was really interesting. I'd like to get your thoughts on it is that the anomaly knocked out like all technology smarter than a light bulb. And so they, it's kind of like we're kind of going back to this very, uh, you know, trench war, trench yeah, so warfare. They mentioned uh, World War uh, One style warfare. Mm -hmm. And then obviously then with this dark sci-fi element, this, uh, the thing that I said is that the fact that we have Red Bull attached to this, it seems like there's going to be a lot of uh, like adrenaline, but also at the same time, they, they're really kind of trying to let people know this is dark, this is gritty, this is going to be very adult, rated M for mature for sure, <laughs> especially when you look at all the gore, uh, you yeah. know, and so I don't know, like I'm, I'm actually I'm sold right now. Obviously, I want to know these questions, and I, for me, I would always say just be don't pre-order games, guys. There's no like unless they come out with some you know some incredible thing, and you feel like you can uh, that you, that you're sold to. But just be responsible with your pre-orders. I'm just gonna put that out there. Nick, uh, we already kind of plugged you. Is there anything you want to say before we wrap up this video? Uh, there is. Uh, I just want to like mention uh, they talked about the characterization of like yourself and other uh, NPCs. There are no good and bad guys, which I found interesting. Yeah, everything it's all seems to be morally kind of neutral. Gray. Well, morally gray. That also kind of hopefully will put us into situations that that kind of drive the story of choice, right? You know, it's like okay, like I'm going to befriend this person, or I'm going to betray this person because you know, like that's I think what makes the like the RPG very compelling outside of just the numbers that you see popping up over you know enemies' yeah. heads, right? Like. Hey, we we have to do this, and we could go about it a couple of different ways, and then you can kind of choose which way. And hopefully that applies to us as well. That it's not just the, you know, the characters that we engage with. <laughs> My voice cracked. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's also yeah, that's a good point. Um, anything else? Uh, so you you just reminded me actually, there are dialogue trees. So I don't know if you'll get to choose like between A and B or more. Uh, but you will sort of be able to navigate conversations and sort of like find out the stuff you want to know. There's extras and there's crucial information. Mm -hmm. So there are dialogue choices. That's cool. I'm in. This is this is going to be great. So uh, mm -hmm. if, if, if there's anything else, guys, we'll be sure to update you with additional videos and content. Again, go follow Nick on his social channels. Link is in the description. Uh, also, if you, you know, are new here to Ginger Prime, uh, and you feel like we've earned your subscription, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hopefully come back for more. Helps us out with the algorithm, but honestly, 
you do you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, for Brian and Nick here, uh, thanks for hanging out. We hope you guys have a fantastic day, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>